Hi guys, so here I have in front of me to unbox the Xiaomi Mi 5C. Now about a year ago I looked at the Mi 5, it wasn't a bad mobile at all. This time the C model of it, slightly different, but what interests me is this is the first time ever that Xiaomi have their own in-house CPU on here, well their chipset they're going to be using. It's called the Surge S1, 28 nanometers, which isn't exactly a super efficient process, that's a little dated now. And it's got eight Cortex A53 cores on there. Four of them can turbo up to 2.2 gigahertz and the other four are 1.4 gigahertz. So they'll be a little bit more efficient. The GPUs are Mali T860. It has four cores on there. Selling for around 240 US. So let's have a look at the first in-house chipset here from Xiaomi. So the seller I used from AliExpress is Goldway, Hong Kong. These guys are really good. They ship things out fast. And if you ask for it to actually be sealed in the box that so they don't touch it, they will also do that, which hopefully is what's in here, a completely sealed one. So let's get this cut open. And they have included an adapter in here because being a Chinese mobile phone, you get the two prong US style power adapters. So for Europe, I need the round plugs, of course. And they always include that in the box there. And here we have it. So still factory sealed as I requested, which is really good to see. Trying not to cut myself here. This knife is deadly. It is so sharp. Put it aside for just a second. So we'll focus on what else we get in the box. This is just your typical leaflet there, so that is all in Chinese. Now, we've got two nano sims that it can take. There is no micro SD card support, I don't think, with this. Just like the Mi 5 and the Mi 5S. A little disappointing that they don't do that on their higher. This isn't a flagship mobile, by the way. This is more mid-range sim tool there. Then we get a Type-C cable and our charger, which hopefully supports quick charge. I have no idea if it does. Oh, with well, this chipset, of course, that they're using. But yes, it does because it's 12 volts, 1.5 amps there. Just before I power it up, I want to check the weight of it. Feels super light, 134 grams. And our thickness comes in at 7.7 millimeters, which isn't bad. So the build of it feels good, very light in hand. Nice rounded edges you can see just along here. There's a tiny little bit of plastic I can see just where the screen glass meets. And I'll just get this off to show you that screen. Which looks very nice with 2.5D edges on the glass along there. Front 8 megapixel camera, the fingerprint reader down the bottom there. Little home button that is of course a hardware button so you press in that will take you to home once I power this on, which I will do in a second. So I'll just show you the rest of the design. So on the bottom here, you can see the holes there for the microphone, that's on the right. Then you've got the four holes for the speaker, of course, then the Type-C port there. Now this bottom part here, that's glass, and it does have a nice rounded curve onto it. So build quality so far is looking really good on this. And these little tiny lines you can just see, those are the antenna strips there. On the back, a 12 megapixel camera. I will take some snaps with us and go out later on in this video, so keep an eye and stay tuned for that. Now, the volume and power buttons here, those are made out of metal, have a good feeling to them. They're not loose, they don't rattle around. And you see there's a little LED flash in there, but looking at it, it looks like it's just a single LED in there, so not a dual tone LED flash. On the top, secondary microphone, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Good to see they haven't removed that and done anything silly there design-wise. And then an IR transmitter. I can see already this is going to be an absolute fingerprint magnet. Just to confirm, you can see no micro SD card support here, just two nano sims. Okay, so time to finally actually power this up. Let's see how long it takes. Now because this has a sealed box when I got it, there's going to be no custom run on this. The seller has not put it in English, so I imagine it's probably going to start out in Chinese. And you can see the blacks on the screen, very good, those are so deep. I can hardly distinguish the top and bottom bezels with this on, that is very difficult to see. Here we go, finally. 
So Asian languages and English backlit menu keys there. You can see with the little dots, the home button. I will just quickly go through this, the typical setup, and it's detecting some wireless AC networks there, which is good. So it definitely supports wireless AC. I'm just going to skip that for now and go through this setup. So add my fingerprint. Okay, so each time I'm doing this, it is vibrating slightly. Done. Default theme setup is complete, which is good. All right, and MIUI 8, very familiar with this. Let's lock it and check the fingerprint reader. Okay, I need to wake it first. This is exactly like the Mi 5 was. So press down, wake the device first, then unlock. That's a shame because other ones, you just need to put your finger there and unlock straight away. So it's a slight annoyance there. So we got bloatware applications, of course. Most of this crap, you can go and un uninstall this. So, okay, I don't want this map thing. That I should be able to remove there, quite simple. All right, have a quick look in the settings. Just check the about phone, have a look at what version we got. So it's MIUI 8.1.4 and three gigabytes of RAM, you can see octa-core max 2.2 gigahertz. And where else have we got on here? Okay, so free available storage, 55 gigabytes of the 64. Okay, so one of my big concerns about this mobile, apart from battery life, is what networks does it support. Now, I have my SIM card in here. It's Mobistar. And for some reason, I haven't even picked up LTE or even 3G yet. So I'm going to have to go into some advanced settings here to see if I can at least get some kind of connectivity here. I don't want to be stuck on 2G. Otherwise, there's no way in the world I can recommend ever wasting your money on this phone if you live in Europe or outside of China for that fact. Okay, so apparently to get the modem to work, what you need to do is hit star hash star hash one and then hash star hash star. It brings up this menu called Song Assistant, which has got nothing to do with any musical songs. Then you go into, I think it's this one here, Tele Assist, and then Telephony there. And the setting you need to change there is the radio access one, I think it is. So it's in three mode. Now we need it in five mode, which is going to give us the frequencies, hopefully for Europe. I'm going to test this now. So I hit save and now it says, please restart to continue. So I'm going to reboot the phone and hopefully I'm going to have 3G or 4G. Okay, so messing around with all those settings there to unlock the rest of the bands worked I have 4G now and 3G. Everything seems to be working, at least here in Spain. But do whatever you do before thinking about buying this. Make sure you check with your seller if it's unlocked, if they have a global ROM on there that might give you all the bands you want in your country. Here's a close-up of the display next to my Mi Max. And it's a very good-looking display because you've got PPI over 400 on the 5.15-inch screen. means it looks very sharp. Very good blacks, good colors, a really flagship spec 1080p screen that's on the Mi 5C. Browsing performance, just a quick little test here. It seems smooth enough. Whoa, <laughs> maybe not. See that lag just then? Well, I, to be fair, this is a very image heavy website, but normally I don't see that kind of slow down there. So that performance, this is the stock browser. Isn't impressive, see that? Yeah, no, there's slow down there stuttery so let's see how it handles a YouTube video and we'll have a listen to the loudspeaker too so there's an embedded video on this and that page performance there is good I just think heavy websites all those images really did bog it down so I'll play that clip now and check out the speaker Well, that really isn't that loud. I'll test some music out later on, probably in the full review, but so far, not really impressive, that loudspeaker. So I'm not running anything in the background, at least I don't think I am. Let's have a look at the RAM use. So I've only got 1.3 gigabytes of three available free to me. So MIUI is still being very heavy 
a very heavy approach there on RAM use. It tends to just suck up all of that RAM there, so a little disappointing there, but I kind of expected that with MIUI 8. Some good news here, there is some updates being pushed out now. I've got a 50 megabyte update that is fixing some good in sound issues, messaging, camera optimization, improves the focus, picture quality, record fix the volume of recordings was too low, and other fixes there. So hopefully they're gonna keep pumping out updates and improve and tweak this. So here's the Antutu score. I was a little curious in what kind of performance it would have, so I ran this. This is 6.2.7, and you can see that that scores on par with the Snapdragon 6 to 5, more or less. You may be wondering, how was the UI performance with this custom chipset? Well, it seems to be perfectly fine, smooth to me. I have seen a couple of little stutters moving around, just multitasking, but overall, not bad. Now, checking out the camera, see how quick it launches. That wasn't too bad. So if you've used MIUI 8, you'll be very familiar. This is the same app that they use. And just quickly check the shutter rate. That seems fine. Of course, I've got some powerful studio lighting on at the moment. And you get all your typical settings, manual settings. At least they're giving us more controls there than you see. And just the budget ones like the Redmi Note 4, you only had a couple of settings you can tweak there. But we've got focus control, exposure time, ISO, white balance, be interesting to see now in video mode if we can shoot in 4k because I'm under the impression that the sensor at least can do that so you got slow-mo there time-lapse video quality oh full HD only we might have to use a third-party camera application like open camera to get 4k that's disappointing I'd expected at least to have 4k on here and maybe that's a ROM update that they need that's just not supported even so, why is 4K not there? Okay, so I'm going to step outside now while I still have a bit of sunlight and take a few snaps and some video samples from both front and rear cameras. Sample from the rear camera, 1080p of course, because that is all I can shoot in with the stock application I have at the moment. So you're probably wondering what you're looking at. No, I'm not in China, but this is what's, what's called a fire. So it's fires at the moment here in Denia, in Valencia, Spain. And you'll see then the audio autofocus does have problems. It seems to just pulse in and out a lot. Now by default it is tap to focus, which is probably best left by default. So you control the focus. And autofocus doesn't seem to want to lock onto things. It's just going in and out all the time. Look at that. It's completely blurry now. And I'm also seeing a lot of lag on the viewfinder, so very unimpressive camera performance so far, at least in video. And now 1080p video at night here. See the focus is still struggling. Now the front facing camera is 8 megapixels. The quality looks like it's alright, but I think only 720p. I can't actually adjust the resolution. It's got no settings there whatsoever. So that concludes the video here. My first impressions are very mixed because the build quality of it is excellent. It has a very nice IPS 1080p panel on there. It's sharp, deep blacks, build quality, 
perfect. I mean, this feels like a flagship mobile. It looks really good, very well put together, no issues with the build quality. I think it's all down to the software so far, the problems that this has. Now, firstly, loudspeaker as well, not good enough, not loud enough, I feel. And then the software problems or optimization that is needed, as always with Xiaomi, is the camera. They always just forget about the cameras. Hopeless autofocus, as you saw in video, and disappointing quality too. Not really happy with that. Now the Surge S1, it seems okay. The performance choppy at times there in the browser. That again could be software optimization, and no doubt is. The other thing that I don't particularly like, the fact that you can't get the full bands on it. Okay, you need to unlock them as you saw to get 4G and 3G. I had to go through that whole process. So not very good there that you have to do all that, but this is of course a Chinese phone, so maybe that's not really a valid point on my behalf. So battery life I think is gonna be the most interesting part of this, which I will definitely be testing out in detail in the full review. And hopefully I will see you back in this channel again soon with my full review and other interesting videos on tech from China. Thank you so much for watching.